Praise the Lord. Praise Definitely the Lord. Um, growth. Amen. I would not be up here right now. Amen. Amen. God has definitely been good, and I can see that he has been, um, it's so funny, the Bible study that you guys had over this morning about, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone and your complacency and all that, and I have to say that God is definitely uh, pushing me into a deeper water of sin, which I've never been before, so uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Bear with me as we uh, dive into the word. Amen. Yes, indeed. Um, my, uh, I was thinking about um, what I was supposed to share, and around the time I was asked to share, um, God kept dropping in my spirit, ambassador. And I was just like, oh, okay, you know. It was just random, so I kind of like, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> so I'm like, ambassador, all right, all right, you know. And then, um, this is he asked me to share. Lord, yes. yes. Um, so then I'm like laying for God, and I'm like, all right, God, I need something to share. What do you have for me? What do you want me to say? And that ambassador um, came up, so I'm like, all right, so where? You know, you hear scriptures in your mind, you're like, where's the address? Where are you? Um, so as I found it, and instead of meditating on it, um, God started to reveal things to me. And um, he basically was telling me our new life's purpose in Christ. You know, a lot of times we we can say if we experience God's goodness, we're yeah. excited, and mm -hmm. you know, God seems to answer our it's in every prayer. You know, that you pray when you first get saved, and then you know, as you grow, you know, the prayers don't get answered as quickly. And sometimes we, you know, kind of lose our faith and our focus. Um, but we can't forget the true reason why God called us. Amen. So I'm going to read to you Second Corinthians five sixteen through twenty one. And that reads, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sent for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. So I was looking at that scripture, and I looked up creation, or creature. Okay. And there were several definitions, and one, you know, action of bringing something into existence. And I'm like, okay, God, so, you know, when you saved us, you, you basically renewed us. We're new. That old person that we were, we were no longer. And then I saw another definition that kind of was like, oh, okay, interesting thing. And it said, a person whose position or fortune is owed to someone or something and who continues under the control or influence of that person or thing. Wow. So then I was thinking, and I don't know why, but my mind went right to under the influence. Right. Now, my thought was like, all right, how do people act when they're under the influence? They're a little bold. They say things that they wouldn't normally say had they not been under the influence. Um, and they normally at times are, do things that they probably wouldn't do because they didn't have the confidence to do it and they're basically not in the right mind. So then I thought about it and I said, like, okay, influence is the power to affect one's behavior and actions. So the moment that we become saved and we are new creatures in Christ, everything that we do, the basis of the things we do should be that of Christ to please God. Mm -hmm. Like, our thoughts, the things we do, the things that we say, should have the essence of who God is. Mm -hmm. Because the moment we get saved, we are new. Mm -hmm. We're creations. We are to represent, we're representatives of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then I was just thinking about, okay, God, you know, I'm supposed to allow you to work in through me and use my hand, use my feet, you know, be a representative of who you are. 
But then I'm like, all right, you know, how and why? And then at times, you know, especially in my walk and faith, I'm like, all right, God, what is my purpose? Why am I here? But little do we all really understand the moment that we become saved and we become Christians, we all have the ministry yeah. of reconciliation. Yeah. In verse 18, he says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So then I'm like, all right, God, you want, you know, you want to use me, you know, you want me to bring others to you, but how? And for the longest time, for some apparent reason, I always thought that, you know, the only time I could be used was in, you know, the church building, within the walls. Um, but the harvest is out there. You know, God said, you know, the, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Yeah. You know, we are supposed to go out and be a witness and be used wherever we're planted. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wonder, you know, you know, all the times that I've worked with people that I didn't like and who got on my nerves, and then I'm like, God, why am I here? You know, these people really aggravate me. Um, but God has called us to be a light. Um, in Matthew 5, 13 through verse 16, He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now it's great, you know, that we're in church and we can feed off of each other and encourage each other, but we're basically light amongst light. So I can put a candle in here and you can see it because you're in here. But imagine if you turned off the light, how radiant that light would be. You know, so we're called to be in a dark place. So, you know, be used or allow God to use you where you plant it. Whatever location it is, you know, if you're in a supermarket or whatever, you use those opportunities to be, you know, a representative of who Christ is, you know, and we, our job is to bring others to Christ. And just to remember that whatever it is that we do is all for his purpose and his glory. And that was another thing that, you know, we were talking about, about so this morning about, you know, how we work unto God, not to people. Amen. You know, people may not treat you right, and you, people may not receive, you know, may not receive the things you say, the things you do, um, but know that it, your reward comes from God. Amen. And he's to be, you know, the primary focus. And then I continued reading, and then I remembered how uh, Jesus was judged by the Pharisees, you know, for eating with sinners and, you know, tax collectors. And right there he said, Jesus was like, no, you know, the sick, they need a doctor, not those that are well. So just, you know, you may feel like you're not appreciated where you're at or the things that you do, you know, the little things that you may say, words of encouragement, you may purposely smile and say hello in a certain coworker and they just refuse to acknowledge you <laughs> and even look at you, you know, me. <laughs> but God said, you know, just keep doing what you're doing because you don't realize that you're planting seeds. You know, there was at one point in my time when I was working, there was one person who, ooh, I just could not stand them. Like, I, I borderline loathed them. Like, I just could not take them. Everything they just said just irritated me because they were just really nasty to me. And I was talking about them to God. Like, what, this person going to work them? They owe me the and the Holy Spirit said, pray for them. And I was like, <laughs> but if you think about it, you really can't talk bad about somebody you're praying for. No. So I think that was too old. God just wanted me to stop talking bad about them. And um, I just prayed for them and just kept praying and praying. And God just, it seemed like, like that. He just turned the thing around. And we became really good friends. Wow. You know, so you just continue to focus on God and allow yes. God to use you, and you yes. never know, you know, the seed that you can plant and the way that you can impact their lives. So then, as I was continuing reading um, through Corinthians, I said, "Okay, God, you, you, we're new creatures in you. You know, we're under your influence. Everything that we do um, is your for your purpose, and we're reconciled us, you know." to other people and you know we also have to be mindful so that a lot of people don't read the Bible so we will be the only Bible that a person will encounter. Right. Right. Um, and then I saw 
um, ambassadors. And the first thing that came to my mind was diplomat. You know, I think, you know, the, how different countries have representatives in different countries and um, who they represent while they're living in another country. So I looked into that and it definitely said the highest ranking person who represents his or her own government while living in another country. And then I was like, all right, God. Huh. And then I kept hearing citizenship. So then I looked up and I saw that Philippians 3.20 says that our citizenship is in heaven. So basically, we are here, but our true home is in heaven. And we are supposed to be representatives of whose we are and where we belong. So then I looked up, you know, different diplomats and um, characteristics of them. And they said they're strong, they're leaders, um, they're well-mannered, they're eloquent in speech. And it just basically saying that they're representatives, they represent their country well. And that's who we are. Like, we're ambassadors for Christ. You know, when people see us and they're around us, they're supposed to be able to tell the difference, mm -hmm. you know, in who we are, the, our manners and the way we do things. You know, you don't have to, and I've never been one to say, I'm saved, are you saved, let's pray. <laughs> you know, I've never been that way. I've always wanted um, my light to shine, because I believe strongly that, you know, you can, you know, preach something in your actions better than you can say it. And um, so I was thinking about that, I was like, all right, so, you know, I think about the ambassador, the diplomat in China, how, you know, how he carries himself, and I'm sure that every person that, you know, is in his presence knows who he is. And that's the same thing it should be for us. And then I was looking at the authority that an ambassador has. You know, it's not just about the um, poise and the mannerism and how they represent their country, but that's a lot of authority and power. And um, so it is with us. You know, we are Christ. And Jesus said that, you know, all power in heaven and earth was given to him. Yeah. And then in Luke, he turned around and gave that to us. Amen. You know, he said that, you know, we should lay some hands on the sick and they shall recover. He yeah. said, you say to this mountain, be that removed, you know, be that cast in the sea. We have a lot of authority and a lot of power. And that power and that authority is not just for us. You know, it's not, you know, praise God, I, I want that job. Yes, you know, I got it because I can line up my faith and speak in the right words. Yes, um, my child can be healed. But it's also the power to go and change the atmosphere in a room. You know, it's the power to pray and change the life of someone who, you know, God told me to pray for that person that I didn't like. He changed their life because of the prayer. So the prayers and the power and the authority is not just for not just for us, but it's for the purpose and the furtherance of God's kingdom. Yeah. And then also I was just thinking about how like, you know, ambassadors and then I think about my children and then I think about Christian. <laughs> for a while, like I would just used to call him Brandon because he was just like a miniature brandy. <laughs> and you know, your kids truly represent you, you know? When they are away from you, you can just see like he's with me, I can just see like Brady's thumbprint all over him. Like I just see him. And even when I'm around Brady, I think about Sister E. I just look at him like, wow, you know. So it's you know, when we're in God's presence and because we are his, a person around us should be able to know wow. that person is saved. Amen. That person is God. Right. Just you don't even have to just, you know, broadcast it or, you know, shirt or you right. know, anything. Right. It's just be who God called you to be and be the right. best that He's called you to be wherever it is. Yeah. You know, so we may have vocations, we have careers, not everybody has to be behind the pole, but not everybody has to be seen to you know, be used. Allow God to use you wherever you are. You know, and use those opportunities when someone is complaining about finances or complaining about their kids. Just pray with them or encourage them. Amen. All you can do is just be there. You know, be God's yeah. hands, be his feet. Because yeah. he can't give somebody an embrace or a hug, but he can do that through you. Yeah. You know, so just allow God to use you. And in closing, <laughs> God has graciously chosen us and has allowed us to experience his goodness, but know that his goodness and his grace is not just for us. You know, not for us to say, you know, God has blessed me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even though we, again, we are representatives of God and how good we are and how good we look, you know, is show forth, you know, his goodness and his grace, but it's also about allowing God to use us and to draw others. We all have that ministry, you know. Don't ever wonder, God, what is my purpose and, and how am I supposed to be used? Just do it. If someone needs help, if someone needs a hug, if someone needs a word of encouragement, you just do it. You just fill in that void. You don't just say, I'll pray for you. No, you fill in that void and you allow God to use you wherever it is, whether it's in that field of law, in the field of HR, you know, and country and all that. Just allow God to use you. 